The river name Gawi is a legacy of the Brythonic Celtic language spoken by the tribes people known to the Romans as the Cornothii, who thinly inhabited Cheshire throughout the Iron Age. The Cornothii's main population concentration lay in the hill country of southern and western Shropshire. Their tribal capital was located at the large hill fort on the Rekin. rises steeply to over 1,000 feet overlooking the Upper Severn Valley and the plain of Shrewsbury, south of Wellington and west of Telford. Since the middle of the first millennium BC the tribe conducted extensive forest clearance on the plain for cereal cultivation and the herding of cattle. They were based in dispersed farmsteads with agricultural territories running radially away from either side of the Mid Cheshire Ridge in the Gowie and Weaver Valleys. Controlling the lowlands was a chain of six elevated hill fort enclosures spread along the ridge. The distinct profile of Hellsby Hill can be seen to the northeast of Sandfield Golf Course, its summit crowned by such a hill fort, probably originally constructed in the Middle Bronze Age, according to recent radiocarbon dating evidence, making it one of the oldest hill forts so far dated in the country. In fact, there is further evidence of human activity at Hellsby dating back to the early Neolithic period from both surface finds and excavation. As well as defensive functions, the Mid Cheshire Ridge may have held ritualistic or ceremonial significance to the people of prehistory. To the immediate north of the river crossing that gives Bridge Trafford its name lies the Gowie Woodland Park, which is owned by the Woodland Trust. This can be accessed from Hassel's Lane. On the opposite side of the A56 is the Chesterfields restaurant within the converted barn of Sandfield Farm. The lower reaches of the 20 mile River Gowie were tidal prior to the construction of the Manchester Ship Canal, which opened in 1894. Much of the area would have consisted of salt marsh with brackish creeks whose traces can still be seen in places and the river is still prone to winter flooding. During and following the Second World War much of the Gowie marshes were drained for agricultural usage and its course straightened and embanked. At several points low sandstone ridges rise above the marshes such as at Ince and Thornton Le Moors. The Gowie now joins the Mersey via a siphon under the ship canal immediately north of the Stanlow oil refinery. To the south of the refinery lies the 400 acre Gowie Meadows Nature Reserve. It was founded in 2002 by Royal Dutch Shell on the land attached to the refinery, stretching from the M56 to the A5117 east of the River Gowie and west of the village of Thornton Le Moors, from where it can be accessed. It consists of low-lying meadows and marshes and is managed by the Cheshire Wildlife Trust on behalf of its current landowner, Essa Oil UK, who acquired the 770-acre refinery in August 2011. The Stanley Refinery processes mainly crude oil from the North Sea, with increasing volumes from the Mediterranean and West Africa. It processes 10.2 million tonnes of crude oil each year, which is more than 20,000 litres per minute. As such, it is the second largest in the country after the Fawley refinery on Southampton Water, and annually produces approximately 16% of the UK's road transport fuels, including 4.4 billion litres of diesel, 3 billion litres of petrol, and 2 billion litres of jet fuel. There is a pipeline for aviation fuel to Manchester International Airport, which is the country's busiest outside London. There is also a direct connection to the National Oil Pipeline Network, routed through Birmingham and beyond towards the capital. The refinery is entirely supplied from the Tranmere Oil Terminal via a 15-mile pipeline. 
When the terminal opened in June 1960, it was then able to accommodate vessels of up to 65,000 tonnes. Today, the average tanker docking at Tranmere is 90,000 tonnes, although it is capable of handling the occasional vessel of up to 170,000 tonnes, known as part-laden, very large crew carriers. Tranmere handles 140 ships annually, docking at two berths, Tranmere North and South. Part of the terminal occupies the site of the former ferry service to Liverpool. Down river, adjacent to the entrance locks of the Manchester Ship Canal, lies the earlier Eastern Oil Terminal, which opened in January 1954. This is located four miles northwest of Stanlow and provides berthing facilities for up to four tankers of 30,000 tonnes. A sixth berth facility is also located along the Manchester Ship Canal at the refinery waterfront and on Stanlow Island. This facility handles the import and export of oil, LPG and chemical products and can process ships of up to 17,000 tonnes, handling a total of 600 vessels a year. Stanlow Island was created when the low-lying rocky promontory of Stanlow Point was cut off by the construction of the Manchester Ship Canal. It stands above the confluence of the River Gowie with the Mersey Estuary. Isolated, windswept and frequently flooded, a small Cistercian Abbey was founded here after 1172 by John Fitzrichard, the sixth Baron of Holton, and the Constable of Chester Castle. It was dedicated to St Mary and served as a daughter abbey to the Order's large abbey at Commermere, which had been founded in the 1130s. The Cistercians were known as the White Monks on account of their undyed habits and led a simpler and harsher life than earlier monastic orders, believing in the virtue of austerity, prayer and manual labour. Seeking seclusion, they founded their houses in wild and remote areas where they undertook major land improvement projects. Their communities were often very large and included many lay brethren, who acted as ploughmen, dairymen, shepherds, carpenters and masons. The Cistercian skills as farmers eventually made the order one of the richest and most influential. They were especially successful in the rural north of England, where they concentrated on sheep farming. According to the chronicles of St Werberg's Abbey at Chester, there were serious floods at Stanlow, and as well as damage to the building, this resulted in the loss of farmland. The storm brought down Stanlow Abbey's tower in 1287, and much of the building was destroyed by a fire two years later. The monks of Stanlow Abbey appealed to Pope Nicholas IV and the Archbishop of Canterbury to move to Warley in East Lancashire on land granted by Henry de Lacy, the 10th Baron of Holton. In 1294 the monks were permitted to move to Warley, although work on the abbey did not commence until 1296. Following this, only the abbot and five other monks remained at Stanlow, working the surviving monastic grange, or farm, which helped to support the parent house at Warley Abbey. Stanlow Grange was used until Henry VIII dissolved England's monasteries from 1536 when part of the abbey's land passed into the hands of Sir Richard Cotton, whose father George had acquired Commermere Abbey at this time. In 1745, farm buildings were built on the abbey ruins, and although now demolished, some original or reused medieval dress sandstone masonry survives in the ruins of the outbuildings, including a reused one metre wide medieval doorway and a tunnel cut into the sandstone and running to the gowey. Until the 1980s, the island was home to a small community of workers from the refinery. Today, the ship berths are serviced by a request ferry that is available around the clock. The 19-mile-long Roman road between the legionary fortress of Diva at Chester and the important industrial and trading settlement at Wilderspool ran through Bridge Trafford, possibly crossing the Gowie Marshes to the southeast of today's bridge. The place names Mickle Trafford and Bridge Trafford are probably derived from a corruption of Stratford or Streetboard. The Old English word stret derives from the Latin strata via, meaning paved way. At first the Romans would have forded the river, although they probably constructed a bridge later. The place names may date from a time when the Roman bridge was no more. The Gowie may have represented the eastern limit of the military estate belonging to the Roman authorities of Chester, known as the Prater Legionis, and later Territorium. 
this land was commandeered from local farmers primarily to provide pasturing for cavalry mounts, pack animals and livestock but which also probably offered access to building stone, timber and other resources. Both the Roman road and the Warrington to Chester road shared much of the same route although its course was altered with the construction of the turnpike of 1786 which is now the A56. Ivan Margery, author of the seminal book on the Roman roads in Britain, first published in 1955, traced the road from Chester to Wallacepool, as far as Picton Lane and Mickle Trafford, finding it again at Preston on the Hill, leaving a gap of some 12 miles. East of Chester, Manning's Lane perpetuates the line of the Roman road, and this was the route of the original Chester to Warrington Road prior to the construction of the turnpike in the late 18th century. Where Manning's Lane passes beneath the M53 motorway bridge, it becomes known as the Street, a name strongly indicative of a Roman road. The route was not one of the imperial military roads, which were paved, two carts wide, and used for the distribution of mail and the movement of troops. Rather, it was a civil route for the movement of people and goods, and had to be only one cart wide. Following on from Marguerite's work in Cheshire, ancient highways researcher and author John Dutton conducted investigations into the 12 mile gap in the known road during the 1980s and 90s. Dutton proposed that the Roman road cross the River Gowie southeast and slightly upstream of the present bridge, maintaining a straighter line across the marshes than the A56, which curves to provide a flatter approach and exit to and from the crossing point. Roman coins and a brooch have been found in the location of this proposed crossing. A branch road led to the Roman fortlet at Ince, approximating with Ince Lane and Criers Lane. It was this branch road that John Dutton proposed utilise the crossing point of the modern bridge. In 1986 Dutton discovered pebbles in hard clay and possible curbing stones in the field known as Pavement Hayes, to the immediate northeast of the railway crossing at Morley Bridge. The Frodshman District Local History Group conducted an excavation here and located the Roman road in July 1988. The Chester to Manchester Railway was constructed in 1850 and Morley Bridge was built to carry the turnpike road over it. The line of the original turnpike was transected by the railway and can still be seen to the north of the A56. The Roman fortlet north of the village Vince was identified as a crop mark by aerial photography in June 1992. 3.6 miles north of Bridge Trafford, between Hall Farm and the Manchester Ship Canal. The rectangular fortlet has an internal area of just under an acre and lies on a low but steep-sided promontory above the 20 metre contour, which must effectively have been a peninsula in Roman times, when the River Channel and tidal salt marshes extended further inland than today. Indeed, the place name Ince derives from the primitive Welsh Innis, meaning island, and is another legacy of the Brythonic Celtic language of the Cornothii tribe, along with the river names Gowie and Weaver. The Ince fortlet is thought to have been constructed to monitor marine traffic transiting the Mersey to Wilderspool, and possibly to guard against incursions from Brigantia to the north. Historically, the river Gowie provided power for up to 20 water mills, Many that remain have been converted into houses, but there are three publicly accessible working mills. These are Bunbury Mill, Walk Mill and Trafford Mill, whose machinery is viable if a water supply were to be reinstated. A mill in the Mickle Trafford Township was first documented in the Cheshire Chamberlain's account of 1302-3, the manor lying within the hundred of Broxton and part of the estate of the Earl of Chester, who leased it to various tenants. From 1510, the principal landowners of the township of Mickle Trafford were the Talbot family who were later granted the Earldom of Shrewsbury. Sometime after 1823, John Talbot, the 16th Earl, commissioned improvements to the existing 18th century Trafford Corn Mill as part of a scheme of reorganisation on the estate, resulting in the building that stands today. The Earl had Alton Abbey in Staffordshire rebuilt and massively expanded to create the palatial residence and grounds known as Alton Towers, and moved the Earldom seat here in 1831. The Talbots remained landowners in the area until December 1917 when the Chester estate of the Earl of Shrewsbury was auctioned. The Shrewsbury Arms on the A56 takes its name from the family's coat of arms. Alton Towers is now a famous theme park which opened in April 1980. Trafford Mill is a long L-shaped orange brick building aligned north-south with the Welsh slate roof and is Grade 2 listed. It has two undershot water wheels of the ponchulate style with segmental brick arches over the wheel pits. The secondary north wheel is of an unusual design for the northwest region, with an iron centred wooden shaft from which single spokes of oak and elm support a cast iron segmental rim onto which shovel like wooden paddles were slotted. 
It powered an oatmeal separator dated to 1883 and a drive wheel on the floor above. In the late 19th century, the mill ground maize and oats and concentrated mainly on producing animal feed. The wheel appears to have continued to be used for fine flour production until demand reduced during the First World War. The larger 18-foot diameter primary south wheel also has a segmental iron rim, supported by two sets of class farm style spokes attached to an iron shaft, which was replaced during renovation during the 1970s. It has a complete set of gearing on the machinery or hearst floor, which powered three pairs of historically significant French burrstones on the floor above. These ground flour until 1952 and remain in situ. During and following the Second World War, the River Gowie was extensively straightened and its level managed to enable agricultural reclamation on its floodplain and prevent the risk of flooding around the Stanlow Oil Refinery, a project begun by Italian prisoners of war. In 1952, the mill lost the use of its primary south wheel and some of the paddles had to be removed to release a boy who had fallen into the wheel pit while swimming in the mill pond. The mill was subsequently sold to the West Cheshire River Board in 1954 and in the early 1960s was deprived of a working water supply by the construction of an earth dam between the river and the mill pond. The mill was then used to store cattle fodder until it became the property of the North West Water Authority following the 1973 Water Act. By this time it was in a derelict condition although re-roofing and repairs were made to prevent further deterioration. It is currently in the ownership of United Utilities with the surrounding land grazed by the Red Pole Rare Breed cattle of Grange Farm. In 2015 the Mickle Trafford Mill Trust was formed as a local community volunteer organisation to preserve the mill and its grounds and to raise funds to restore it to working order and create an education centre and cafe. Guided tours can be arranged and open days are held occasionally. Further upstream on the River Gowie is Walk Mill in Stapleford, south of Tarvin and east of Waverton. This is a working mill in a new building but there has been a water mill on the site since 1200. It was originally a fuller's mill as opposed to a corn mill and its name derives from the Roman process of felting and cleaning cloth known as fulling which was done by people walking on the fabric. This mill was occupied until 1959 and demolished in around 1965. The new three-storey brick mill produces flour for sale and offers guided tours of the equipment in operation, along with the miller's kitchen offering home-baked bread and cakes and other light meals. The tiles in the miller's kitchen and mill area are the ones which form the floor of the original building. An all-metal 14-foot diameter undershot ponchulate wheel powers the mill. Mickle Trafford lies in the parish of Plemstall. The parish church of St Peter's stands on a slightly elevated hillock overlooking the Gowie Marshes above the 10 metre contour line on a site historically known as the Isle of Chester. A church has stood on the site since at least the 7th century. Legend tells of a shipwrecked fisherman washed ashore here who built a church dedicated to St Peter the Fisherman as an act of thanksgiving. The present sandstone church is of the late perpendicular style of the latter 15th century with 16th century alterations and a squat two-stage tower on a plinth with a castellated parapet dated to 1826. It has a seven bay nave and chancel in one range. Plemstall means Plegman's holy place and derives from a tradition that the renowned Mercian scholar and cleric lived here in seclusion in the late 9th century. Sometime before 887, Plegman was summoned to the court of King Alfred the Great of Wessex to act as his tutor and regenerate learning within his realm which by 886 comprised all the Anglo-Saxon people not under subjection to the Danes. In the year 890 he was appointed Archbishop of Canterbury by Alfred and travelled to Rome to be confirmed in office by Pope Formosa, probably the following year. Alfred died in 899 and the next year Plegman crowned his son Edward as king at Kingston-upon-Thames. In addition to his religious duties, the Archbishop was involved in matters of state and he attended the formal councils held by Edward the Elder. Plegman made a papal visit again in late 908, meeting Pope Sergius III and also purchased some of the relics of St Blaise, which he brought back to Canterbury. Edward the Elder divided England beyond Wessex into shires, creating Chestershire in Mercia around the year 920. Over time this became shortened to Cheshire. Plegman died on 2nd of August 923 at Canterbury. He was later venerated as a saint with a feast day on this day. King Edward died the next year on the 24th of July 924 at the Royal Estate of Farndon, 12 miles south of Chester, shortly after suppressing a combined uprising by the Mercians and Welsh at Chester, and was buried at the New Minster, Winchester. St Plegman's Well lies beside Plemster Lane on the edge of a low cliff, west of a Gowie tributary, about 200 metres to the west of St Peter's Church. 
It is one of two holy wells in West Cheshire, and Plegmund is reputed to have conducted baptisms for people who visited his hermitage cell, a practice that is said to have continued at the well up to the 20th century. In 1907, a curb was erected around the well, although much of the rest of the surviving stonework is probably late medieval, and some may date back to the Anglo-Saxon period. The hawthorn tree overhanging the well was formally dressed on St. Plegmund's feast day on the 2nd of August. The metal arch and railings were unveiled in June 2002, and since the millennium, dressings have commemorated special events and occasions, 